Hello all. Amy's just eating her lunch and God, that camera's bent. Anyway, um, thanks Amy for volunteering here. You're, you're, you're pretty huge when you're doing this. You do help me out a lot. So I thought what we'll do is some surface anatomy on the medial border of the foot. The guys at Western Sydney Uni, we used to do this a fair bit. So let's go. Let's start with the phalanges. So it's just bending the interphalangeal joint. And we'll be able to then work out. It's obviously the distal phalanx. Then we'll start moving the MTPJ. You can see the roundness of the, the head, the first metatarsal. Surface anatomy is very important because it's really hard to, to diagnose things if you're really unsure about the anatomy. And also with injection techniques too, you get to really know exactly where to inject. So with the first metatarsal, if you start from the, the planar aspect of the head, you notice that this is all soft. So you push into it until you feel the curvature of the planar aspect of the bone. So if you just keep on marking it, and then you'll see that it starts to come back around again, and it starts to widen up. And where it widens up is the start of the first metatarsal cuneiform joint. Follow it dorsally. and we have the first metatarsal. I usually skip the, the medial cuneiform and I'll go to the navicular, and the navicular tuberosity is really easy to, to feel, especially on Amy. If I follow it around, yep, so it's around here and the navicular is pretty big. So it's going to go almost right to the, the lateral aspect of the foot. And I can just feel the joint space around here. So the medial cuneiform will then be around that section. Once we've finished with the navicular, then it's easy just to go to the other landmark. And that would be the medial malleolus. Maybe a slightly wider. Now the talus is, is hard because most of it we can't really see or the calcaneus. But if we go down, I can feel the, the proximal, the posterior aspect of the calc. We can feel bone to here. It's the Achilles tendon. This is all soft tissue. So that's the posterior aspect. If we go about a centimeter or so down, that is, yeah, it's right there. So I can now feel the sustum taculum tali. And with this, then we may, we can sort of figure out where the talus would go. So that's the, the head of the talus. The body's going to be behind the, the malleolus, comes down around there, comes here and down, sort of like that. And then obviously the sustum taculum talis is part of the calcaneus. And 
who look a little bit like that. So that's the osteology. Let's have a look at the, the tendons. The easiest one is to find to be our anterior tendon. So Amy, if you can just dorsiflex your foot. So you can see it there, it's, it's pretty big. So we can just mark it out. And that is going to go down and spread out pretty much to the base of the first. And relaxing. And if we take the reference point of the sustum tacculum tailway, the tibialis posterior tendon sort of crosses the, the medial border of the medial border of the navicular. Flexor digitorum longus also runs just above the sustum tacculum tali. Flexor hallucis, yep, flexor hallucis longus runs underneath it and there's a groove here for flexor hallucis longus. And these two tendons sort of cross around here. And where they cross there, that is called the master knot of Henry. Uh, pathology. Now I'm trying to think. Um, yep, yeah, might as well while we're here. Mark the abductor hallucis muscle so you can feel it. You can see the, the belly through here and it's going to be attaching to the calcaneus. So there's abductor hallucis around here. Tendo Achilles we mentioned. Now I think they're the only medial tendons. You have tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus running underneath sus and tacculum tali. Probably another important thing to mention about the sus and tacculum tali is that it makes up the floor of the mid facet of the subtalar joint is in here and also on the lateral aspect we know the sinus tarsi and the sinus tarsi sort of goes obliquely and exits just here so there's a little hole and it's quite small it's obviously wide laterally but it's quite small the sinus canalis um, exits through here medially so it's just next to the the sasum tacculum tali and if you're going to get a coalition, most of the time these mid-facet coalitions occur right there, right in that section. So if you palpate and, and this child or whoever has pain, you know that that's probably a mid-facet coalition, especially if they're getting ankle sprains, foot's starting to become stiff, they can't make circles, um, and they're starting to get a pronated foot. So that will go with red. Let's then talk about the tibial nerve. So the tibial nerve comes down and it's quite broad. It can be up to you know five to seven millimeters in diameter. Comes down here and then it'll go underneath the abductor hallucis. There's the medial calcaneal branch of that nerve. As it comes underneath the abductor hallucis, it will then divide into the medial plantar nerve and also the lateral plantar nerve. And we all know about Baxter's nerve or the first branch of the medial, sorry, first branch of the lateral plantar nerve also comes down there. So where you get um, distal tarsal tunnel syndrome is just underneath the abductor hallucis muscle belly. So if we were to make an incision, 
take the reflect the abductor lucis muscle belly we'll see the deep fascia of the abductor lucis and then the, the tibial nerve branches run underneath there and it's that fascia that is released to take tension off um, we also have if that's the nerve obviously we've got the tibial artery that runs through there in branches and we can obviously just palpate it near the the artery we would have the vein as well that will run in into here and branch out um, If we were to also include that um, the flexor retinaculum runs around here as well, so just off the, the calcaneus, so we have the, the flexor retinaculum and then all of that stuff would be underneath it. Even if you were to draw this and then get the patient on the ground, you can almost see parts of their biomechanics moving. You can see the, the prominence of the, the tailor head or the navicular as they pronate down and so forth. But anyway, there is um, some very quick surface anatomy. Thanks again.